economic freedom is a necessary condition for human, all human freedom, but it's not a sufficient condition. You can have an economy that's largely free with large elements of restrictions. For example, let me take the American experience. Before the Civil War, we had a mixture of a largely free e economy with a segment of the population, the slaves, held in the condition of involuntary servitude. But even where you don't have complete political freedom, in the case of a Singapore or a Taiwan, human beings are much freer than they are in those societies where there is no economic freedom either. If you compare the conditions of people in a place like Singapore with the conditions of people in a place like Red China or for that matter in Indonesia, you will see that the economic freedom is a very important component of total freedom. It's not something different, it's not something separate. Economic freedom is part of total freedom, and for most people, it's the most important part. Um, freedom doesn't mean very much to a starving man. And if a free society could not help the starving man, it would be very difficult for her to remain free very long. That's why the ability of a free society to improve the lot of the ordinary person is a very, very necessary condition for its remaining free, but it's not the fundamental reason why I want a free society. I want a free society for the human and ethical and moral values that you stressed as appertaining to freedom. Freedom really rests the value of freedom. Yeah, but, but suppose the moral values mean a lot to me, but again, as I say, they mean nothing to the man who's hungry. Absolutely he hasn't had time not. to think. Absolutely it means absolutely not. nothing to him. What are you going to do? Well, do you think it does mean something to him? No. Oh. At first, I think it means something to many of them, of course. Many men have died for their moral values, have put those moral values much above life itself. But I, you and I, as citizens of a free society, will not stand well, uh, the side of it, people. Yeah, let me put it in a different way. Suppose you turned, you made a speech to all the people on welfare, and you said to them, look, there are, uh, uh, freedom is it's much more important than, than, uh, than the, the welfare money that you're getting. Uh, there are ethical concepts. There are spiritual things about things. Men have died for this thing. But you told them all, all that, and then said, and we're going to withdraw welfare now. From you. What do you think would happen? I would tell them something else. I would tell them. I don't know also what you do. I'll tell them both what I would do and what I would tell them. I would tell them, welfare has been corrupting you. Look at what it's doing to you. Look at what's doing to your children. You would be far better off but in suppose, every respect. But suppose he said to you, I don't see that at all. I'm and without that welfare, we'd be in an awful mess. You're wrong. You wouldn't be in an awful mess, but I understand your feeling, and I do not propose to withdraw assistance from you like that all at once. I think it would be intolerable to throw the millions of people who are now depending on welfare onto the streets. We've got to go gradually from here to there. That's why I proposed a negative income tax as a transitional device that it would enable us to give help to people who really need help while not at the same time having the kind of mess we have now where most of the benefits go to people who are not. But look at the way in which the welfare system has been corrupting the very fabric of our society. We have put people in a trap which is of no part of their own making. I don't blame them. But they have been put in a trap where we are inducing them to become dependents, to become children.